Hi everyone, Josh Rosenblum here with Balanced Claims. We just got done shooting a video on introducing the Eagle View Assess drone um, and some of the cool capabilities of that. And we're really excited to get this out and to put it in the field and fly it. But before we can fly it, I had to take the Part 107 Airman's Knowledge Exam and be certified as a remote pilot. Um, to do anything commercial with drones, to fly it for any kind of money, no matter what you're doing, you're gonna have to be certified by law uh, to in license to fly this. So I had to study for the exam, take it and pass it before I can take this out and fly it. Um, I wanted to do a video real quick to encourage people that, you know, this isn't a hard process. Um, you do have to study, you have to take it serious. Um, but it's not hard, right? It's an easy process. Uh, so I want to walk you through a little bit of what I did, uh, to study for it materials I used and, um, what it was like taking the test. So let's just jump into it here. To study for the test, there's a lot of free and even paid resources out there online to, you know, have different study guides or videos on YouTube, which is the, probably the most significant one for me. One of the free documents you can use to study would be the FAA Remote Pilot Small Unmanned Aircraft Systems Study Guide. Uh, very long name there. Uh, we're going to provide that to you in Balance Academy in PDF format. If you're not a member of Balance Academy, strongly recommend you jump on there. Uh, we talk all things supplementing. We showcase vendor partners that, you know, improve success rates around supplementing and give you some cool tools to help you along the way. But as far as studying for this, YouTube was probably the biggest tool I used. Um, I did use the FAA remote pilot study guide to uh, kind of check different things, but ultimately I watched videos and had other people teach me that have taken the test and knew where to really focus on. Um, Overall, I spent about four days studying. It was only about an hour, maybe more a day. Uh, ultimately, I think I probably spent around eight hours, um, but that's because I went a little bit longer and in depth into some things that I really geeked out on. Um, so really just a couple hours a day. Uh, started off by taking the free practice exam that we're gonna have a link to below in the comments. This practice exam, I just took it without studying. You know, just see where I'm at, see how far I can get, and did terrible. Got a 37 to 40%. But with that said, I got 37, 40% just on, you know, basic common sense, really. Uh, there's some safety stuff on there that is blatantly obvious. Um, so even without studying for this exam, I was 40% the way there, which is uh, pretty encouraging, right? So I only have to study, find out those uh, the other 60% here. So I started off by watching a YouTube video. We will provide that link in the comments below. Um, that YouTube video was great. It was about two hours of content. Uh, you can pause it and rewatch some certain sections if you didn't quite grasp it the first time. Uh, but it's a two hour video. Um, after watching that video, I did take that test again, the practice exam and passed with an 88%. So obviously huge change just with the two hours of investment into myself, right? Um, so I knew that there were some areas uh, that I really need to work on. The cool thing about this practice exam is that it will tell you the questions that you got wrong. Uh, so you can actually go back and study those and make sure you fully understand them before moving on. So after studying on those areas uh, that I was struggling on, I probably spent another half hour to 45 minutes on that. Um, I took the practice exam again, got 100%. Uh, to be fair, I did memorize at this point a few of those questions and answers. Uh, so I had to be honest with myself and did I really understand that or did I just kind of know the answer? Um, and I didn't quite fully understand it. Uh, so I did go back and restudy those. And a couple of areas that I really had to focus on was the sectional charts. If you've never seen one, they're awful looking. They're, um, there's a lot going on and really nothing makes sense to you unless you really study them and break them down and start in small areas and break them down. It makes a little bit more sense. But make sure you focus on your latitude and longitudes. Make sure you know those well. Uh, your degrees and seconds. Once you start studying, that will make more sense. And then know your airspaces, right? And how to read where the ceilings and the floors are on those airspaces. Um, the second thing is weather. Um, you know, we have a lot of technology now. We'll pull up an app and we'll learn the weather. But for this test, for the purposes of this test, you're going to have to learn uh, how to read the METAR and TAFT reports, TAFT, T-A-F. And those are written out like code. I mean, uh, the first time looking at them, you're like, there's no way I'm ever going to be able to read these and make sense of it. But once again, with just a real quick study guide, they start making sense pretty easily, and they're not that daunting. Uh, but those were two areas that made up a large portion of this test besides safety, and you really need to know them to pass. So after passing the uh, 
practice test with 100%. I went ahead and scheduled my part 107. I was able to schedule it, pay for it online. They had a location, it was right around the corner. It was a quick five minute drive. Um, got in and out of there real easily. Um, I did pass with an 87%, which was a little surprising. I felt really good going in because I spent quite a bit of time studying. I did miss seven questions, um, but I only needed a 70% to pass. So um, that's very encouraging. And I believe anybody that goes through this um, uh, list of stuff, it's a study for, I think you're going to be just fine taking that test and passing. It's not that hard. If I can do it, you can do it. No problem. Uh, the test is multiple choice, meaning there's three questions. One of them is always going to be like the obvious wrong answer. Uh, so even by even if you have to guess on a question, which some of them are worded a little funky, um, you can eliminate it down to a 50-50 chance of getting that question right, which I'm pretty sure I got a few of them right. Um, but that was overall my experience with the test. Like I say it again, it was an easy test, but you do have to take it serious and study for it. Um, so I definitely encourage you guys to go get certified so that you can take on flying drones for yourself. Um, so we're going to have a couple videos coming up. We're going to take you along on my first test flight. Hopefully I don't crash this thing. And then we're going to take you onto some live projects to show how we can implement this into the supplementing process. We look forward to seeing you on the next one.